Okay, we're going to look at a valve that runs on uh, now. One of the common things we find on a valve that won't shut down, as in this case here, this thing will run forever if we don't fix what the problem is. Many times it's as, as, as simple as taking your adjustment screw and backing it off because somebody's been setting the cycle and it's just got too long a run time. So we back it off until it stops and then we try it again and we'll have a much shorter cycle there. That's the simplest correction for a valve that won't shut off. If that fails, just as to show you uh, how this valve works a little bit, we can turn that all the way in and we know it's going to come on and run for a long time. Now the best way to determine if it's your valve or something else is simply to disconnect your tubing from that input and it should shut down pretty well uh, within a few seconds. And as you can see it did there. Uh, if it does that, you can be pretty sure that your timing is turned in too far and needs to be adjusted out. Uh, However, sometimes that will not resolve your issue and the valve will keep on running whether the tubing's connected or not. So that tells us that the problem is internal in the water chamber of the valve. And I've turned the water off. We're going to uh, bleed off our pressure. and we're going to have to remove the top servo motor off the valve in order to find where the problem is. Take the servo motor off, grab it by the white part, pull straight up, it will come off. And as you can see, we've got the water diaphragm came off with the uh, servo motor. You'll notice the orifice plate and the little spring are held in place by the magnet in the servo motor. So the next thing we want to check is our water diaphragm. Now a lot of times these valves will get uh, pressure surges in them and they'll actually blow this diaphragm off its post. You can see here at the bottom of these veins, the edge of that, the inner edge of that uh, hole through the water diaphragm. Now this post, as you can see, is made with a flange around it for this water diaphragm to fit in there. You want to take that and stretch it over the veins, pull it out so it goes into that slot. Turn it around that slot so that all the edges are even. And now if you look at this vein, you'll see that that rubber is back in underneath in that groove the way it should be. And the surface around the veins is flat. That is your sealing surface, that seal that seats onto the seat of the valve here. Uh, if that rubber is off its post, it will not shut down no matter what you do. If that appears to be okay, you want to look at the back side, the bottom side of this diaphragm. There's a recessed circle with a tiny hole in it right here. You want to hold, pull that away from the plastic, hold it up to the light and sight through it to make sure that hole is clear. If you can't see light through that hole, it, it is plugged with debris and it needs to be cleared out. You can either blow it out or wash it out, uh, but it's important that be clear. 
now we've got that those points covered let's put the diaphragm back into the valve seat you always check this air recess where the diaphragm goes to make sure it's clear of debris and that your seat is clear of debris and then the, the uh, rubber diaphragm actually seats down even with the top of the recess so that looks like a good seat now let's set that aside for a moment and check our other parts while we're in there this is your orifice plate if you hold it edgewise to the light you can see one side of this rubber little rubber disc or plug is wider than the other side the wide side is the side you want to face down onto your water diaphragm so that it has the best chance of sealing the hole in the middle. So you want to be sure to get the wide side of the rubber plug down on top of the water diaphragm. Your spring, of course, you want to be sure it's in the upright position in the recess provided for it. The small side of the rubber in the uh, metal disc should face the spring, the large face should face the water diaphragm in the valve. Now we should assemble this and according to the way everything looks, it is fine and it should work and shut off. Once we've got all the screws in there, we want to go through, through and make sure they're torqued down fairly snug. Just to make sure we have a good seal on that water diaphragm. We'll connect our spare push button again. Open our stop check. The valve came on and shut off. That's a good indication that our water diaphragm is working okay. We can test it again. And it should shut off by itself. We do have that cycle a little bit long. So let's adjust it back out again. There we go. Now we should have a relatively short cycle. Okay. I think that pretty well covers the things that make a valve not shut off. So in review, we've checked our timing to make sure it was set properly. We pulled off our tube to see if the valve shut down. Uh, we checked our little hole to make sure it was clear. Uh, and that about does it. We also checked our uh, push button diaphragm assembly to make sure it was working properly. And I think that pretty much covers what, to, what we need to do when the valve will not shut off.